Hello, my name is Russ Miller of Creation, Evolution, and Science Ministries, and thank you for coming out tonight. This evening, we're going to take a look at what we call the evil fruits of Darwinism. Jesus told us to beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly, they are ravening wolves. You know, folks today have a tendency to watch out for the wolves, but the wolves are easy to spot. Jesus says, watch out for the sheep that inwardly are ravening wolves that will mislead many. So how do we tell the difference? Well, Jesus told us that as well. He said, you'll know them by their fruits. A good tree will bring forth good fruit, whereas a corrupt tree will bring forth evil fruits. You can tell good from bad by the fruit. So let's take a look at the evil fruits of the Darwinian tree. Now, this could upset a few folks, so keep one thing in mind. If you're upset when you get home, read the second psalm and relax. <laughs> Remember that God is always in total control. Jesus said that when the devil speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Have you ever heard of Satan's standard operating procedure? First, gets you to doubt God's word. The first time that Lucifer shows up in Scripture is in Genesis 3, verse 1. And he asks the first question posed in the Bible. He says to Eve, Hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? He's planting some doubt in Eve's mind. And Eve answers, Well, we're not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, or we'll surely die. So now he denies God's word and says, Ye shall not surely die if you eat of this tree. He's now put some doubt in her mind, and he's denied God's word. And now the final promise, deify man. If you eat of the tree, your eyes will be open, and ye shall be as God yourself. Doubt, deny, and deify at Satan's standard operating procedure. Satan's primary means of destroying man are to deceive sinful man so he believes he's his own God. And thus, these individuals that accept this will reject Jesus' sacrifice for them on their behalf, and they'll think that they have the ability to judge other men. One of Satan's primary means of achieving this is to give people money and power. The Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. That's because money equals power equals ye shall be as your own God. Satan's tried to entice Jesus with money and power. He said, all these kingdoms I will give to thee if you'll just bow down and worship me. But Jesus was much too wise to fall for that. We're told, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. It is so easy to believe in Jesus. Just read his word and believe his word, word for word, and cover to cover. Darwin's theory is simply an attempt to get man to reject our creator and make ourselves be the most evolved, be as God. Darwinism teaches, number one, doubt God's word. Did God really mean he made the world in six literal days? Hath God said? Now, deny God's word. The Strata layers formed slowly as the world evolved over billions of years of time. And now deify yourself. There is no God. You're the most evolved. You are your own God. Doubt, deny, and deify it. Satan's standard operating procedure. Evolution is the foundational philosophy for racism and prejudice. Darwin thought that blacks and natives were just advanced animals. The title of his book, we're told today, was The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection. But there was actually a subtitle, which was, or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. Keep in mind, his book was published in 1859, when we still had slavery in the United States. And if you think you're the most evolved, that means you can be your own god. Thomas Huxley was known as Darwin's bulldog because of his aggressive promotion of Darwinism. He stated no rational man believes that the average Negro is the equal, much less the superior of the white man. 
Charles Kingsley was an Anglican priest who promoted Darwinism. He stated the black people of Australia, the African Negro, are just poor brutes in human shape. They must perish off the face of the earth. You think he would have found that anywhere in Scripture? Absolutely not. The Bible says that God hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. You know, there are different colors of cattle, but there's white, brown, black cattle, but they're still cattle, correct? People are the same way. God made us with a wide variety in our gene pool, and there are different colors of people. And that color of our skin is only literally skin deep. It's how much melanin we have in our skin. The less melanin, the lighter the skin, the more melanin, the darker the skin. But we're all made in the image of God. We're all made of one blood. That's the reason you can take blood transfusions from people all around the world or kidney transplants. You couldn't do that if we had evolved to different levels. Evolution is also the foundational philosophy for eugenics and Nazism. Eugenics is a combination of Greek words which means well-born. Now on the surface, it sounds great. It's the study to improve the physical and mental characteristics of the human race. On the surface, it's hard to argue with that. Sir Francis Galton is known as the father of eugenics. He was Darwin's cousin. But this practice led to the early demise of millions, if not billions, of people because it leads to eliminating the unworthy via abortion, infanticide, euthanasia, and ethnic cleansing. After World War II, when the Nazis had put eugenics into its true form, it became a dirty word. In fact, the annals of eugenics changed their name to the annals of human genetics. And Eugenics Quarterly changed their name to the Journal of Social Biology. Yet, believe it or not, today in campuses around the country, eugenics is becoming in vogue once again. Hitler believed the Germans were the most evolved, the superior race, and deserved to rule the world. Sir Arthur Keith, an avid evolutionist, stated of the German Fuhrer that the Fuhrer has consistently sought to make the practice of Germany conform to the theory of evolution, tooth and claw, survival of the fittest. The Scientific Origins of National Socialism wrote, Social Darwinism reached its peak in Nazi Germany under Hitler, the supreme evolutionist, and Nazism the ultimate fruit of the evolutionary tree. Keep in mind, this was written in 1971 two years before we legalized abortion in America because evolution is, excuse me, Nazism was not even close to being the ultimate fruit of the evolutionary tree. Evolution is also the foundational philosophy to allow abortion to thrive. When I say the foundational philosophy, a lot of these things would survive without Darwinism, but they'd only be about 2% as strong as they are today without this excuse to carry on their practices. Reasons people use to justify abortion include that, well, it's not a human. It's just going through its, its various evolutionary phases in its mother's womb. That's the theory of recapitulation, refuted and proven to be fraud in the 1870s. They say, well, the child may be unwanted or a financial burden. Well, then put the child up for, for adoption. And I can't even name a child who's not a financial burden, can you? <laughs> Absolutely not. I know five friends that have adopted children, and everyone had to bring them in from overseas, China, India, or Africa, because we're aborting our own children here. And some people say, well, abortion is legal, but that doesn't make it morally correct. It was in 1973, 10 years after we kicked creation and prayer out of the schools and replaced it with our philosophy with Darwinian evolution, that the U.S. Supreme Court declared the word person as used in the 14th Amendment does not include the unborn. In 1936, the German Supreme Court refused to recognize Jews as persons in the legal sense. Yet what they did to the Jews was not correct, was it? Hitler referred to the Jews as a parasite in the body of nations. Well, abortionists refer to unborn babies as a parasite in the woman's body. This is Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, founded in 1916 for what she said. In fact, she wrote down, 
She wanted to eliminate the inferior races like Orientals, Jews, and Blacks, who she referred to as human weeds. And she said she wanted to throw in fundamentalists and Catholics as well. It's a sweet person. She stated, I look forward to seeing humanity free of the tyranny of Christianity. What does she mean by tyranny of Christianity? Well, you see, Christians actually think that people are made in the image of God. So you can't just get rid of the ones you choose not to like. The Bible says, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Here's a photo of a baby 21 weeks from conception having an operation. Look at that well-formed hand. Did you know that just four weeks from conception, the baby has a beating heart? At eight weeks, the baby responds to touch and feels pain. When we abort a baby, they are given no pain medication. Have you ever heard of Anna Rosa? Her mother tried to have her aborted when she was seven and a half months pregnant. The doctor reached up inside and snipped off what he thought was her head and delivered what he expected to be the dead baby, but... He hadn't cut off her head. He just chopped off her right arm, and she was born alive. You ask an abortionist about Anna Rosa, they'll say, oh, yeah, that, that was terrible. That was horrible. But if they cut off her head, that would have been okay. There's something wrong with that type of thinking. And you should always remember that we're also God's offspring. This is a 1952 Planned Parenthood pamphlet, and in the pamphlet it asks the question, is abortion part of planning? And their answer was definitely not. And abortion kills the life of a baby after it has begun. Oh boy, have they ever changed their tune. Why? Well, because the love of money is the root of all evil. Planned Parenthood makes tens of millions of dollars killing babies. The Bible tells us that cursed be he that takes reward to slay an innocent person, they will answer to their creator for their actions. On 9-11, about 3,200 people were killed on American soil by terrorists. We are outraged, as we should have been, and we've gone to war on terrorism. But you know, on that same day, in every 19 hours since, we aborted that many Americans ourselves? Before the dust had settled from the World Trade Center collapses, we had already aborted that many Americans ourselves. And we've done so every 19 hours since. Where's the outrage? You see, there's something wrong with our thinking today. If you added up all the American servicemen and women that have given their lives so that we can have the freedoms that we enjoy, it totals about 1.6 million American servicemen and women. But did you know that we have aborted more babies than that in the last uh, 35 or so years since we approved abortion? We've aborted about 50 million Americans, 30 babies for every one serviceman killed. 20% of the world's population has been aborted. 1.3 billion humans have been aborted. So this by far outweighs Nazism which killed 13 million people in their camps. Evolution is also the foundational philosophy for radical environmentalism. We are to be good stewards of the land, but some people have taken these to extremes. The Bible talks about those who have changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator. This from a coloring book in a Massachusetts public school as they teach the kids to say, I pledge allegiance to the earth, which I do love and depend on, and to all life on land, air, and sea, which is as much a part of the earth as me. Hitler made the individual feel expendable for the greater cause, but the same mentality is used in the radical environmental movement today. Evolutionary atheists consider the worth of humans to be a fungus on the surface, a hairless ape an accidental twig, or a mere insect, an ant. If you're standing in the kitchen and an ant scurries across the floor, you just step on it, right? Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes stated, I see no reason for attributing to man a significant difference in kind 
from a grain of sand. I'm telling you that type of thinking is dangerous. For the last 30 to 40 years, we've been taught that the world is overpopulated. Well, the next time you fly in an airplane, look out the window. You might go for a half an hour before you even come across another city. To control population, the United Nations and Planned Parenthood have been promoting abortion and homosexuality for the last 40 to 50 years. This is the 1986 Humanist of the Year and former president of Planned Parenthood. She said, we should be very proud what our, of what our mission is. Abortion is only the tip of the iceberg. Well, if helping to kill 1.3 billion people is only tip, the tip of the iceberg, I'm afraid to see what the rest of that iceberg is. But I suspect it includes eugenics, infanticide, euthanasia, and continually promoting more homosexuality because... Homosexuals don't have offspring. The National Education Association has been approving diversity and safety training, which actually is promoting homosexual activities. The Bible says that all they that hate me love death. Satan has put it into the minds of some people that they should eliminate mankind for our own benefit. Charles Worcester of the Environmental Defense Fund stated that people are the cause of all the problems. We have too many of them. We need to get rid of some of them. <laughs> Notice how it's always them they have to get rid of? It's the way they think. Jacques Cousteau stated, in order to stabilize world population, we must eliminate 350,000 people per day. Ted Turner wants a 95% decline in human population levels. That means 19 out of 20 of us are going to have to go. He says the root of the problem is Christianity. Why is that? Because Christians think that people are made in the image of God, just like our Creator tells us. So people have a value. The distinguished Texas scientist for 2006 was this University of Texas ecology professor, he stated the deaths of 5.8 billion of the 6 billion people on Earth are needed to keep Earth from turning into a fat human biomass. There's something wrong with this type of thinking. This environmental magazine stated the extinction of the Homo sapiens phasing out of the human race will solve every problem on Earth, social and environmental. Well, it will cure the social problems. There's no question about that. <clears throat> I think these guys should go first, right? <laughs> Jesus said the time will come that whosoever kills you will think he does God's service. These things will they do because they have not known the Father nor me. This is a letter to the editor in the paper a couple of years ago. It says, I am a healthcare professional. Survival of the fittest helps to keep our species genetically strong. When we save someone who would otherwise die, we allow diseases to survive and spread in our gene pool. If you're sick in the hospital, who wants this guy taking care of you? <laughs> Absolutely. Something wrong with that type of thinking. <clears throat> Evolution is also the foundational philosophy for the animal rights movement. Peter Singer is known as the father of the animal rights movement. He stated that Christianity is our foe. If animal rights is to succeed, we must destroy the Judeo-Christian religious tradition, which once again puts man in charge as stewards of the creation and gives mankind a worth well above that of animals. And you know, I know many Christians who are members of animal rights organizations. They need to wake up and take a look at what they're supporting. The Bible says, in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, speaking lies, commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving. It's okay for people to kill and eat meat today. It has been since Noah and his family got off of the ark. But we are to receive meat with thanksgiving to our biblical creator. Ingrid Newkirk is the founder of PETA. She stated, six million Jews may have died in concentration camps, but six billion broiler chickens will die this year. Like there's some sort of a comparison. 
This college book tells the kids in the Judeo-Christian tradition, God tells Noah, every moving thing shall be meat for you. Goes on to state, these ideas have no basis in fact. Our complex brains are simply means that evolution has provided. Now, if you want to believe your brain evolved from a rock, that's certainly your choice, but I would suggest you see our 50 facts versus Darwinism in the textbooks before you make that decision. Evolution is also the foundational philosophy for socialism, communism, and progressive liberalism. There are two basic worldviews on our morals and rights. If you base your rights on a biblical creation like our founding fathers did, we say that there's a creator that sets moral guidelines for us to follow, and we have God-given rights which are unalienable. No one can take them away because they're given to us by our creator. If you base your worldview on Darwinian evolution, you say that morals are set by man's ever-changing opinions and rights are granted by the government, which can also take them away. The Declaration of Independence reads, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. As we teach our generations that we do not have a creator, we're coming closer and closer to undermining our own freedoms. The Bible says that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. At the age of 17, Karl Marx wrote a paper telling of his love for the Lord. Then he left for college, studied philosophy, and turned his back on God. The Bible warns us, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Karl Marx stated that his goal was to dethrone God and to destroy capitalism. Marx based his philosophy of communism on Darwinism, which got God out of the picture so atheistic communism could take off. This is Roger Baldwin, founder of the ACLU. He said that communism is their goal. Marx came up with his Communist Manifesto, which had several rules. One was to provide free education for all children in public schools, because that way you could put forth propaganda and get the kids to believe your way of thinking. This is the first chairman of American's public school system, Horace Mann, known as the father of public education. His stated goal was to deliver children from the Christian religion. In the late 1800s, this Princeton professor predicted that a centralized system of national education will prove most appalling for the propagation of anti-Christian and atheistic unbelief. This man hit the nail right on the head. This is John Dewey. He introduced what's called progressive education, which now dominates public school teaching systems. He was the first president of the American Humanist Association, the largest atheist group in America. He was a signer of the original Humanist Manifesto, which is based on Darwinian-style evolution being true. His stated goal was to solve the Christian problem via the public school system. This former Nebraska senator stated, Bible-believing people do not have the right to indoctrinate their children in their religious beliefs because we, the state, are preparing them for when America will be part of a one-world global society and their children will not fit in. Hitler said, let me control the textbooks, and I will control the state. Hitler understood the importance of indoctrinating the youth at an early age. Humanists understand this very well themselves. The indoctrination into Darwinism began in earnest in 1963, when creation and prayer were kicked out of the schools and replaced with Darwinian evolution. Carolyn Porco of the Space Science Institute stated, We must teach our children from a very young age about the story of the universe more glorious and awesome than anything offered by any scripture or God. The Bible talks of those folks who are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. 
The National Center for Science Education has had as their president outspoken atheist Dr. Eugenie Scott. Their stated purpose is to keep creation out of the schools. All of these teachings in the school books we refute in our 50 Facts versus Darwinism in the textbooks. Each one is demonstrably false. But Hitler said, if you tell a lie long enough, loud enough, and often enough, the people will believe it. In fact, he said the bigger the lie, the more believable it will be. Recent studies show that we are losing as Christians four out of five Christian-raised kids. Eighty-plus percent of Christian kids are leaving the church before the age of 20. Why? Because they're being taught they evolved over millions of years of death and suffering, and that that means the Bible's not true. And we as Christians need to start standing up for the truth and teaching kids the facts. Communists also have rules for revolution. Number one was corrupt the young, get them away from religion. The Bible says as, it, as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Look what has happened to teenage suicide rates since we kicked creation, uh, creation and prayer out of schools in 63. Trip, they have tripled. Some people say to me, why are kids killing themselves? And I say, well, maybe it's because we're teaching them they have no hope, no future. There's no God to answer to. Some folks say to me, why did the kids in Colorado kill those other students? Well, according to the head FBI investigator and the head state psychiatrist, the lead shooter was disgusted by the inferior breed of humanity around him. On the day of the shooting, he wore a T-shirt that read, Natural Selection. And the media fails to report this. Letters to the editor in the Arizona Republic following another school shooting asked, What's happening with youth today? As a 50-year-old, I long for the good old days. Another letter stated 50 years ago, guns were available in homes. Schools had rifle teams. We didn't have school shootings. What's different now? Another wrote, writer said, This never happened 50 years ago when guns were far more available. Fifty years of social engineering have turned our kids into mass murderers. What happened about 50 years ago? We kicked creation and prayer out of the schools, and we started teaching our children they evolved from a rock with no God to answer to and no one to set moral guidelines. That is what has happened. We are now reaping what we have sown. The rules also say break down the old moral virtues. The year before they kicked creation and prayer out of the schools, the school's largest problems were talking out of turn and chewing gum. Today, the problems include drug and alcohol abuse, rape, pregnancy, and aggravated assault. Fifty years of teaching kids they evolved without a God to answer to, and we are reaping the fruit today. The rules also say divide the people into hostile groups by race, religion, income, gender, political affiliation, etc. And get the people's mind off their government by focusing their attention on various forms of amusement like sports. Today all people talk about are football games and such. The Bible says I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. You know, it's kind of hard to watch more than about two minutes of television and not break that guideline. The word muse means to think. But the word amuse means to not think, like in amusement. Did you know that the average American watches over 1,500 hours of television annually? You could read your Bible 10 times during that time. Yet the majority of Christians today have never read their Bible once. When we don't know what the Word of God says, it is very easy to have somebody mislead us. Back to those rules. Get control of all media. Hitler said, let me control the media, and I will control the masses. Eighty days after the 9-11 attacks, this Pulitzer Prize-winning New York Times author or columnist wrote, fundamentalism menaces the peace and is not found in Islam alone. Christians, believing that creation is literal truth, question Darwin. Well, I don't question Darwin. I just show he was absolutely wrong. And it doesn't take but seven seconds to do so. Lewis went on to warn that such beliefs are a threat to America. Christian beliefs are a threat to America? 
Our founding fathers might have found that a bit humorous. Back to the rules. Encourage a government attitude that is soft on crime. Look what happened to violent crime starting in 1963. Violent crime has skyrocketed. It's up almost 1,000%. Encourage the attitude that's soft on crime. Studies reveal that from 98 to 2002, only 2%, only one out of every 50 of the federal gun crimes were even prosecuted. Or Virginia in the mid-1990s had one of the nation's highest violent crime rates of murder, rape, and aggravated assault. So they implemented what they call Project Exile. They just began enforcing one federal law, which states that any former felon who's let out of jail, if he's caught with a weapon on him, a gun, or even a bullet in his pocket, it's an automatic five to 10 year prison sentence in federal prison. They said that violent crime dropped 43% the first year, and the media fails to report this. In fact, the uh, Justice Department reports that just 7% of criminals commit 85% of the violent crime. We could get rid of the violent crime by just locking up this 7%. Back to the rules. So why don't we enforce these laws? Because Rule 7 caused the registration of all firearms to eventually confiscate. You see, every dictator enforces gun control on his people because gun control equals the power to control equals ye shall be as gods. For instance, while a pupil at an ecclesiastical school, Comrade Stalin began to read Darwin and became an outspoken atheist. In 1929, the Soviet Union established gun control, and between 29 and 1953, they killed somewhere between 20 and 40 million of their own citizens. Germany established gun control in 1935. From 1939 to 1945, they rounded up and exterminated 13 million people. China established gun control in 1935. The communists took over in 1949. Between 1949 and 1970, Mao Zedong murdered 60 million people in China. He listed Charles Darwin and Darwin's bulldog, Thomas Huxley, as his two favorite authors. The Second Amendment is the, really the insurance policy that we have for the freedoms that we enjoy in America. And gun control has a proven track record 24 months after guns were confiscated from law-abiding citizens in Australia and Britain. Studies say that homicides are up over 5%. Assaults are up almost 14%, and armed robberies are up 70%. Gun control has a proven track record of increasing violent crime. Yet Attorney General Janet Reno stated, waiting periods are only a step, registration is only a step. The prohibition of private firearms is the goal. The problem is that criminals don't follow the laws. Just law-abiding people follow the laws. Reno went on to state, a cultist is one who has a strong belief in the Bible, in the second coming of Christ, who attends Bible studies and has a strong belief in the Second Amendment. Well, that sounds like just about everybody that wrote and signed our Declaration of Independence and Constitution. They're a bunch of cultists. One of those cultists, Benjamin Franklin, stated, those who give up liberty for security shall enjoy neither liberty or security. You know, the real issue is, should we be teaching our kids that there's no creator to answer to? And this is what we've been teaching our kids since 1963. We're now on our fourth generation of Americans being taught there's no biblical creator to answer to. Evolution and millions of years' beliefs are the foundational philosophies for Christian compromise. It was in the early 1800s that scientists started saying, wait a minute, those sedimentary layers of rock laid down by water, they didn't form in a flood, they formed slowly over billions of years. And by the, oh, about 1810, 1815, church leaders in England began compromising God's word with millions of years of death and suffering before sin. Today in England, only 5% of the English attend a Christian church. It's predicted in 15 years that number will be down to about 1%. 
You know, in our money, we put George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson. Here's their 10-pound note. They put Charles Darwin on their money. See, they worship at the altar of Darwinism. Today in America, about 90% of accredited Christian colleges and seminaries are now teaching old earth philosophies, putting death and suffering before man's sin. And believe me, these people will not let me show our other presentations to their people. 70% of the graduates coming out of these schools believe that death and suffering existed before man. I spoke at Northern Arizona University a year ago. I presented our 50 facts versus evolution. I titled it Science versus Darwinism. I had dozens and dozens of students come up to me afterwards and thank me for putting them back on, the, on that soundtrack. They were about to leave their faith. Now, a year later, NAU has started a new course called Science and Creationism to try to attack the overwhelming evidence I showed the kids that evening. They own the textbooks, they own the media, they own the school system, and they think they have to have a special course to try to offset what I can show kids in one hour. The sad thing is, postmodernism today is a philosophy where whatever you feel is right is right for you. So we have no right to tell somebody else right and wrong because that's imposing our views upon them. Postmodernism. And if you stand up for anything, that makes you mean spirited, arrogant, haughty, and unloving. Not one campus pastor at NAU has asked me to come and speak to their kids in the last year, or ever for that matter. In fact, they told me that when I came to NAU and showed people the Bible was true, I was being arrogant, haughty, mean-spirited, and unloving because I was telling people that don't believe the Bible that the Bible's true, and I have no right to impose my beliefs on other people and they shut me out so their kids don't get the information we show in our presentations. Syed Kuteb blamed the decline of Western civilization on the lack of Christian influence. His writings influenced Osama bin Laden, and he stated that Islam would take over where Christianity had failed. Evolution is also the foundational philosophy for worldwide globalization, the new world order. The Bible says that in the last days, perilous times shall come, that we're all to receive a mark in their right hand or foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell unless he has the mark or the name of the beast. Well, we've had the technology now for a long time. They can actually take a computer, and roll, a computer chip and roll it up to the size of a grain of rice and put it under the skin like they've done for dogs. So if you lose your dog, they... They scan the chip and your name and address are on there. They probably thought this was really cute. They named it Mark's Puppy, Mark of the Beast, get it? I'm sure that was just an accident on their part. But the Bible warns, if any man worship the beast and receive his mark in his forehead or hand, he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone forever and forever. Now, they do have this technology. Now, we can't say for sure that this is the mark of the beast. We won't know for sure until retrospect. I suspect it sure fits all the categories. But they can make this small computer chip and implant it into somebody's hand, and it's going to be for good purposes initially. If your baby gets stolen, they scan the baby's hand four or five years later, and they know it's your child, a good thing. They can put medical records. If you're found passed out, they can scan your hand and find out what medications you're allergic to and save your life. And eventually they'll be able to put your financial information so you don't have to worry about losing your wallet, forgetting your wallet, or having your wallet stolen because you go to the store and just scan your, your credit card. All be for a good purpose, but eventually it could be turned to an evil purpose. This magazine on the front page had the story of the chipsters about implant technology is racing ahead with bionic speed, part of an evolution of humanity. The last sentence read, resistance is futile. Kind of scary, isn't it? You're probably thinking, hey, Russ, nice message, thanks. But actually, this is a very good message because the message is this. God will do everything he has promised us. You know, all these things I've gone through are historical facts, right? I mean, you're already aware of all of them. I'm just pointing them out again. But Jesus said, These things I have spoken unto you that you might have peace. 
in the world you will have tribulation. If we didn't see that tribulation, that would mean God's word is not true. But be of good cheer. Jesus has overcome the world. The kings of the earth and the rulers will take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. That means against you and I. And professing themselves to be wise, they're going to be fooled. And they're going to change the glory of the uncorruptible God, which I believe is his creation, into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. It sounds to me like they're going to change creation into the fairy tale of Darwinian-style evolution, which lets you think that you're the most of all, that you are your own God, Satan's standard operating procedure. But he that sits in the heavens will be laughing. The Lord will have them in derision. They think they're going to overpower God, and God is laughing at them. He has them in derision. They're teaching evolution. They can't figure out why they can't find any missing links. They can't figure out why they can't figure out how nature could have add, added new and beneficial genetic information to a gene pool. They can't figure out why the word of God always stands up to the tests of time and science. God has them in derision. But by Jesus' blood, we will be saved from wrath through him. Now, we may see tribulation where the world persecutes us, but we won't see God's wrath where God punishes the world. So God wins in the end, and that means believers win for eternity. So always keep that in mind. So thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, be ye steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord. Serve the Lord. So read the second Psalms and relax. Trust in God and find more ways to serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's get more people on that narrow path into eternity into heaven. Realize that God is in total control. Be wise as serpents and gentle as doves. Pray for those in authority and pray for our country. And use your Christian influence in politics and school boards, etc. Get out there and influence people. And prepare the soil by destroying Darwinism and teaching about the creation evolution issues. Get our DVDs, copy them, give them to folks that you know, your, your mother, your father, your sister, brother, nephews, kids, next door neighbors. And then once you've prepared the soil by tearing up the thorn bushes of Darwinian evolution, Preach the gospel and plant that seed deep in good soil. But be not deceived. Whatsoever a man sows, that he shall also reap. And let us not be weary in doing well, for in due season we shall reap. Jesus said that a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. And the fruits of Darwinism include racism, abortionism, Nazism, communism, mass genocide, humanism, the New World Order, and billions of people rejecting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and spending eternity for their swelling and gnashing of teeth. The last recorded words of Jesus are found in Revelation 22, verse 20, where he promises, surely I come quickly. I would end this presentation with one short word of prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, please come quickly. Amen. Amen.